Hey everybody, what's going on? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference Well YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like your girl and if not, manifest, plan and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all is surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome, happy to have you guys. And before you leave, definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for your girl so when I drop content and you come and learn about what's going on with your girl. And speaking of coming and learn about your girl, I'm an author, motivational speaker, travel influencer, content creator, CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys. So today is Wednesday. Hump day. So we at it again. You guys know on Wednesdays we do our collaborations. Uh, with my podcast interviews I do and I got another dope one for you guys this one is uh I like the title this uh is with the shits podcast so you know you know I have to rock the camera watch the show with the shit so here it is you guys um dope host Mr. DC Chambers um got a chance to collaborate with him and just talk and chop it up and had a real good time you know talking about my journey you know putting good out into the world uh, being black in America, man, and, and representing the culture. Uh, so so many topics we, we talked about and had such a great time. And, and big shout out to him for allowing me to come um, to his platform and, you know, just share my story, promote myself. And I truly appreciate it, man. Uh, I also, this was actually the first time we got to link up. Um, I actually got an invite back to his uh, game night for Jeopardy. And so I played the uh, the Jeopardy game with him. So we had a really good time with that. So again, big shout out to my boy DC for having me with the um, with the Shits podcast. And uh, without further ado, with me yip yapping and jaw jacking, you guys. Let's get into my audio interview. Um, again, I did with uh, my boy DC here. And uh, once it's done, we'll come back on and talk a little bit more about what's going on in the Difference World. Yeah, here it is. Business is people, it is Wednesday. <laughs> I'm back in effect. We got no game shows. I got guests tonight. Well, I got a guest tonight. Uh, some news and some notes, real quick. Before we get into that, I want to put this back on the screen because this is very important. Uh, I need y'all to read this. Uh, Dream by Royal is presenting their third annual Thanksgiving drive. Want to be a part of it? Want to commit? Donate. Make sure you know everybody has something to eat this Thanksgiving because. Everybody needs to eat. Um, so if you could, do that. Make sure you get involved. It's always good to give back. But I'm here. I'm from a guest out. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. What's up, DC? Can you see me? Can you hear me? I can see. Yeah, we good. We good. Got you. Um, how you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Shout out to everybody listening and watching it. Uh, yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. Uh, I'm an author, motivational speaker, a travel influencer, content creator, CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, big shout out to DC for having me. Happy to be here and shoot the breeze with you and rock out with your boy. That is a long list of stuff. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I, know. Um, I told you, I got, I got things going on for my family. Like, you somewhere sit, sit your ass down somewhere different, guy. Man, you got some. Always got some going on. When you read that list, it made me feel like I ain't did shit yet with my life, and I feel like every time I bring somebody on here, they life they like they got like. 45 LLCs, uh, you know, wrote two books. And I'd be like, damn, I got a podcast. I'm doing something right in life, huh? Yeah, 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 uh, you know, something. <laughs> Don't worry, but, you're uh, running your own race. This is not supposed to be. And even in just like how you said it, even though I got all these notches and accomplishments and titles on my belt, I still feel like I ain't doing enough, like or, or I'm at the level that I'm supposed to be. Uh, and so don't worry, we, we're all in that same boat in some way, shape, or form. But no worries. True. Uh, real quick, let me get through these news and notes real quick. Uh, so I don't know if y'all heard, but uh, Jada Pickett back on her shit again. I'm not really one for gossip, but this really pissed me off when I seen it. 
because she's trying to sell the book. Now she's throwing niggas under the bus. Uh, apparently, her and Will have been separated for like seven years now, and they just faking the funk, and everybody's using them as relationship goals, and that's a horrible relationship. She toxic as fuck, but don't nobody want to admit it. Um, <laughs> that's just how I feel. Sorry. Uh, what do you think? Them Virgos do it to you every time. <laughs> yeah. So, <it's>... um, <laughs> man, you know, and I, I woke up. Oh, man. <laughs> Some told me not to get on Instagram this morning. I wasn't going to do them wake up to the shits. But, and that's just what I happen to see is uh, blonde ball Jada <laughs> hollering about she and Will been separated since 2016. But I kind of felt that vibe when that whole um, entanglement uh, gate broke out with her and August Alcina. And then him and uh, what's old girl uh, just played Barbie, Margot Robbie. You know, they had a thing going on as well. And so then they were talk- talking about open relationships and such. So that's kind of where it let you know right there that you know things wasn't as good as it may seem and so hey but we can't judge just, what, what's going on behind closed doors because we don't know what 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 you know they've been together for over two decades and you know, them, them damn doors so, ain't been closed as long as time even though they separated they ain't getting no divorce so you know i just think she's trying like to sell a book i just feel like she's just trying to sell a book and that's all it is to it so she was just like hey i'm gonna throw I do this too. This information nobody fucking asked for. I'm just gonna throw it out here because I ain't put this nigga through enough I, just yet. Oh, um, I think if, if I'm giving it from a female perspective, it's called um, uh, 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 what's that? Getting it before it, uh, he gets it, so so be the first one because it looks like all hell was about to break loose. So she wanted to be the one to say it before, uh, and so that's why because you know she, he he took a loss, man, when he did that slap. For her, now it was understandable I, and they coming from from his side, but she now claiming she thought it was a joke, but she yeah. was gave that little, like, you know she wasn't laughing, she didn't find it funny at all. But I don't know, it's that's Jada was my girl, man. She she still is, you know, you know. But to each his own, and who will be to judge? And I'm not perfect, you know. I got my own going on, so. And then who's to say when, you know, I make it big and, and I arrive, I wouldn't be on the other side and people are judging me and I'm under a microscope. So, um, yeah. I don't ever. What you say, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying with, with her toxic ways and the way she goes about things. It is, it does look like it's sneaky and underhanded and that she does throw her husband under the bus. But as she stated, they ain't going nowhere. And so, who knows? Well, she may got that with the deal on. Got that deal, nah, nah. <laughs> so, yeah, something uh, good. That nigga putting up with a lot. Uh, speaking of putting up with a lot, um, James Harden is not reporting to camp. He said he's not doing nothing with some Philadelphia 76ers. So, once again, my nigga ain't playing. I don't know. Um, baseball playoff is starting. Yeah, never. But, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, I guess they say. Uh, speaking of green gas, uh, baseball playoffs have started, and I ain't watching one bit because that shit's boring. Oh, <laughs> I, I tried to get into it, but I just, I, baseball, I love it, but I don't like watching it. Um, it's wild because uh, in here, in, out here in Texas, football is religion, but in Houston, since, you know, the Astros, they got them another championship. This is like the yeah. holy grail for them. So everywhere you go, everywhere, as soon as you walk in or leave out of Houston, it's Astros, Astros, Astros. The hell with Texas and the Rockets. The Astros world around here. <laughs> so, yeah. That's all I'm hearing is about the Astros and what they doing. I ain't gonna Everybody say like I'm outside of Houston uh, don't really like them, so I don't yeah. know. But not too much now. You don't talk about them Astros. I don't know about the Astros. I'm just saying um, they have not been outside of Houston. People don't like the Astros, but um, I ain't gonna teach well, y'all out of. But they always come and getting a taste of the Houston living. Sure, yeah. I, mean, I, I grew up there for a little bit. My sister and them there. I don't have a problem in Houston. It's just the baseball team. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, we're gonna get past that. So let's let's talk about you. Um. 
you wrote a book. But before we get to the book, let's let's because we were we, we were talking earlier, um, uh, prior to this in a in a little little meeting. Uh, let's talk about the uh, Panda Pan Panda Manam Express, whatever that you know the thing that happened where everybody shut down and the world was on lockdown. The Panda, the Pandemic Express. Um, <laughs> I think are you being funny. No, hey, you really don't know how to pronounce that. No, I'm just playing. I do. Uh-huh. I, 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 Panda <laughs> Express, but uh, no, you know when. When the world shut down and everybody was kind of locked down, um, we had the conversation, you know, it, it showed a lot of people, you know, whether they have it or not. Um, mm-hmm. So let's talk about your experience with that. Oh, wow. I learned a lot about myself and others and what I'm willing to put up with and what I'm not going to put up with. So many things. I went through so many metamorphoses, if you will, using some big words now. Um, mm-hmm. But then just that pandemic brain, uh, from being able to get up and go wherever I feel and traveling all over the world to being put basically in the box and told when and where we can come out and when and how long we can stay in. Uh, man, that did something to me. I'm, I'm a Sagittarius, and so we like to get up and roam and, and don't like to be told what to do and, and how and how to do it. And so when that happened, that just brought on a whole nother level of depression for me and, and um, being stuck in a house and can't go anywhere and things happening still around the world, people losing their lives by the thousands per day and, you know, scared and thinking, am I next? You know, and one of my family members next and a lot of people in my family did have to catch COVID as well as I lost family members due to COVID. And um, that was just new world order for us, man, because afterwards nothing was ever the same. Um, but out of it, you know, it's always a blessing in, in disguise in, in every situation, I like to say. And so with that, uh, for me, uh, it forced me to, to get serious about getting my mental health in check. And once I did that, that led to me writing my book. And with my book came my LLC. And from then on, you know, just going up, 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 up. And, um, but to, to get to where I am or to say to how, how I got to where I am would be to backtrack and give you guys a little bit of background about myself and where I come from. You know, as I've already stated, I'm from Q- or if I haven't stated, I told you guys I'm 32. I'm from Houston. Um, and I had a pretty good childhood coming up, up until the time I was around 11. And then me and my family fell on hard times. And we ended up homeless for the next three years and literally living up to the post, you know, sleeping everywhere we could, you know, from parks and cars, shelters and bus stops, uh, relatives, strangers' house, and even at one point got so bad to where I was sleeping at a crack house. And then from there, you know, into 14, I was secretly placed in foster care by a relative, and none of my other family members knew where I was for you know those six months, the first six months of me being in the system, and it wasn't until I found out through another form of foster care that if I stayed in, in the state of Texas, uh, if you aged out of the foster care, they would pay for your four-year tuition to college. And so <clears throat> right there, D.C., you know, a light bulb went out in my head to where I just had to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just made that decision to stay um, not in a better situation, but the lesser of the evil, if you will, because uh, it was hard being in foster care for four years being shuffled around you're in that system, you don't have a name, you basically a case number. And But I made that decision ultimately because I knew what good it would come out of it. And I'm glad I did. Uh, once I aged out of care and graduated from high school, I went to San Francisco State University. And within that opportunity, so many doors opened up for me there uh, that lead to where I am now. I got the opportunity to study abroad. I went to Kim Young University in South Korea and there where my travel bug was planted. Uh, while I was over there, I got to travel to eight other countries, including China and Japan and all over Europe. And uh, as well as I got to start my own student organization. Uh, that's where my motivational speaking bug was planted. Uh, it was titled Pay It Forward. And we would go to, or a segment of it, is where we would go to different high schools and speak with the students on the importance of education. And oftentimes I would share my testimony and what I had just conquered. And towards the end of my speeches, a lot of the times the kids would come to me and be like, 
well, I didn't know that, you know, the state of Texas would pay for my tuition if I had aged out. So I'm going to go to, you know, college now. So right there, that's where I knew, you know, I had a story that needed to be shared. And so um, that happened. And then I also got to, you know, basically as well graduated uh, with my bachelor's degree in international business. I have two minors in economics and business communication. Few years later, I ended up getting my master's degree in entrepreneurship. I also have my licensed real estate agent, as well as in insurance. Uh, but with all that being said, DC and all those accomplishments and titles and stuff, I felt that shit don't mean a damn thing if I was still, you know, dealing with issues on the inside, dealing with things from my past, my childhood that was traumatic for me, that that carried over within, you know, throughout high school, throughout college all into my adulthood, and it wasn't until, you know, and I will say this, uh, what was it for me was, and anybody can tell you this, that growing up in an abnormal uh, environment for them, it would be normal to me. So when I got taken out of that chaotic environment and placed in, you know, foster, in foster care, I was actually placed in the foster homes I was placed with uh, were black families. They were well off, well educated, had nice houses, cars, was put together, and that's just how I wanted to be. And so, uh, but on the other end, that was a whole totally different new world for me from where I had just come from. And it just for me felt awkward. It wasn't, you know, it felt too good to be true. And so, what I begin to do is just become self sabotaging and, you know, just begin to become very off putting and push people away or have that thought, oh, I'm going to get them before they get me, or, you know, I'm the captain of my own ship. I decide when it's time to sink it. And so, I would have that type of attitude all throughout high school, even through college. And again, once you know, I became a young adult and got out into the real world and had, uh, actually had a lot of uh, good career opportunities coming my way you know, at the time, but I squandered it all because I didn't feel that I was worthy of it. There was uh, an incident to where I had a meeting with a well-connected person and uh, I just let those negative thoughts get to me in the back of my head telling me, oh, you know, you're not good enough, you know, they just take you know, pity on you because you cost care, you know, things like that. So what I did was I purposely showed up late to the meeting, and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth. And for years, I, I dwelled on that mistake as well as, you know, other mistakes and opportunities missed and squandered that I did along my journey. And it wasn't until I was pushing my 30s and, you know, I had to look myself in the mirror and face that ugly truth that, Whatever I went through as a child, <clears throat> whatever I may have went through as a young adult, it may or may not have been my fault. It may or may not have been in my control. But mm-hmm. as an adult, it is my problem to go and fix. And so with that being said, you know, I just had to dismiss, dismiss that notion that, you know, black people don't do therapy, so to speak. And, you know, this black girl, you know, took herself to do some therapy. And in doing so, uh, I'm glad I did because, you know, my therapist encouraged me to get back into something I love doing, which was writing, and still do it to this day. And, of course, being, again, stuck in the house with the pandemic, can't go anywhere. And then, you know, boom, May 25th, 2020 happens, the day George Floyd dies. And, you know, he's from Houston as well. He's from Third Ward. I'm from Fifth Ward. And so when they were having the protests and the marches in his name, I wanted to be a part of it. Planned on going and attending, but when it came down to it, I couldn't. I felt like, you know, I wanted my voice to be heard long after, you know, his protest or his funeral was over with. I wanted my voice to be heard and stand long after I'm gone. And so, talking with God and asking Him for the spirit of discernment and Him to show me the way that, you know, I can put out into the public that's going to wake people up, catch their attention, and talk about something that's real and that's, you know, needed to be talked about. And this is what he showed me. And so little by little, it would come to me, you know, either, you know, watching a TV show or in a dream, talking with people. And I was just asking myself these questions, well, what if? And this started in June 2020. By December 2020, I finished the manuscript and reached out to my lawyer. She read it, you know, gave it her opinion and high praises and asked, uh, what is the name of your business? And I kept telling her the name of my book. And that's one thing about it, DC, you know, no matter how many degrees you got on your belt, how much money you got in your bank account, you know, what, how many titles you got, you're never too old or too young to, you know, 
continue to learn new things and grow and absorb. Yeah, and for so sure. I had to hit the ground running, you know, and learning about how to start an LLC in Texas. And so that is where Third Eye Entertainment was born. And, and with that, how I came up with that name, uh, for me, I, I love spiritual meditation and chakra healing and reading about astral projection. And so I'm very in tune, you know, with my third eye, if you will. So with that, I feel once you're in tune with your heart and your mind is in tune with one another, then you can manifest anything that it is that you see in your mind and your heart into existence. So that's where Third Eye Entertainment LLC was born. And it's a business that uh, <clears throat> strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. And it just so happens our first product to the public is my book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. And I've written this book to encourage and, and, uh, and pro, excuse me, provoke thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So I'll be advised that this is intended for a mature audience, as well as, you know, if you guys can't take this type of heat, you come over to the kitchen, just get your little fire blanket. I always tell people that's the point of it all is to have these conversations that need to be had by people who like to turn a blind eye and like to, you know, sweep things under the rug and pretend like things aren't there when it's clearly there. And so, again, with this book, What If? Controversial Paradigm Shift, I have it set up in four main paradigms. We have historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And within each of these paradigms, I'm asking questions that pertain to <clears throat> the life situations that have occurred in America, within the African American community, uh, whether it be the past, the present, and hopefully not the future. And so, uh, asking, uh, with the example, first paradigm we have historical, I would ask the question, uh, when we first open the book, right off the bat, what if in 1619, Africans started to deal in illegal slave trade and whereas they kidnapped millions of, of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships to America. And then you'll see that thought-provoking or uh, graphic il illustration is going to grasp you. You see white slaves in shackles and chains and you have the black slave masters, you know, with the whips and you have some of the slaves jumping over the ship like how our people did. And it's basically, you know, a race war reversal asking the question, what if this happened to you and your people? What if this was still happening to you and your people? And with that, the answer was, you're okay with it. Then if you're not okay with it, excuse me, then why is it okay if it happens to a black person? And what, what's, why is it excusable then? And people like to come up with, you know, to such as, for example, when George Floyd died, clearly you see that, you know, this officer had his knee in his neck for over eight minutes. But in fact, every, well, not everybody, but, you know, some people online, you know, were putting in or well, he was resisting or he was high on fentanyl. They seen every, they had every other excuse other than, you know, this police officer oh, having his knee in his neck that caused his death. And so it's things like that that's what pushed me to say, well, let me put it to you this way. Let me hold the mirror up to your face and see how you would see or how you would feel then if you've seen it happen you see these illustrations it's, it's nothing that in this book is not i'm not telling any lies and i've also have references for uh, all of the questions that i asked because these are actual true and historical events that have occurred in the african-american community it's just the only difference is it's just white skin now instead of uh, black skin, black skin. let me so, ask you this real quick yeah. let me ask you this um when you, when this, when you, because I know a lot of times, you know, there's the controversy sales type aspect of things. Do you feel like this book was met with some resistance at first? Oh, yeah, that's, that's the point of all, but what is real will prosper. And, and even now, I still get a lot of people that, I don't want to say, because I, that's a good thing about filters, it blocks out the negative comments. But uh, again, it's not the point, and I want to put this out there. This book was not put, uh, uh, published to incite any type of racial wars or uh, piss off one particular group. This book was simply, again, meant to, you know, again, push for thought-provoking conversations about, you know, social awareness topics like injustice 
and and for people that turn a blind eye to these type of situations, this is how I catch your attention. One thing I've learned about society or I've seen over time is that people like controversy more than you know looking at what's real. They'll flock to controversy uh, as opposed to you know something else that's going on that needs to be that needs your attention. Uh, for instance, you know Johnny Depp in the Amber Heard case. You see people doing all kinds of you know vlogs and podcasts and streaming on them doing good and damn well. It's other things you can be talking God about. Better folks here. They ain't worried about y'all. They sit for like whether who win, lose, or why. They still gonna have money oh. in the bank. And it's things like that. But I noticed would catch people's attention. And so with the way that I have written this book, again, it's working how I thought it would. It, it catches their attention. Some get this, some understand where I'm coming from. But the one thing, the point of it all is for them to have those conversations to get the ball rolling and ultimately push for systemic change instead of dwelling on systemic racism. And I'm well aware, DC, that, you know, change doesn't happen overnight. It takes more than one person bitching and complaining. Uh, it's going to take the whole village, more than the whole village coming together and, and fighting a good fight. It's not, again, going to happen overnight. But what if, DC, what if this is a generation that plans to see for the next? And for me, nothing beats the failure but a try. And so this is what, this is my try. As well as, you know, I, uh, Again, this book, I'm aware that it's going to ring some bells and piss some people off. But for those that's out oh, there yeah, saying, that's, you know, I, I, that's not the point of it. But <laughs> that's why I've hit hypothetical, uh, the hypothetical paradigm. For those that are mature to make it true, true enough to have enough common sense to see where I'm saying, where I'm coming from, and that can make it through the historical, political, and the precedent paradigms and re- make it to hypothetical they will see that it's not just about pissing off white people or one particular group. It's more than that. It's, it's, it's about unity coming together, talking about accountability, acknowledgement. It's not just about black and white with this book. I touch bases on all cultures, including, you know, Muslims, uh, Native Americans, Hispanics, even the LGBTQ community are included in this book as well. And so again, it's not just about black and white, pissing people off or inciting any type of racial war. That's why you have to read the book. I often tell people read the book and then pass judgment. And so uh, I encourage people to go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get a copy of my book, What If Controversial Paradigm Shift, and share it with others. I put reviews everywhere you can, including Amazon, website. Um, again, another part of my business with the social, uh, the service side, not just with the products, with the service side of it, again, with trying to bring some and we talk about topics not only with equality and justice, we touch on uh, issues such as, you know, domestic violence, uh, social awareness topics per month. So, for example, this month is October, so it's breast cancer awareness. So we will this month be talking about a, a, doing a topic on breast cancer awareness, you know, talk about child sex trafficking, you know, whatever the case may be that, that, that are often turned a blind eye to and people don't like to talk about. We bring it to light here at Third Eye Entertainment, as well as, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, as well as we have the um, uh, my, my YouTube channel. I talk about those issues and I do my motivational speaking uh, on Mondays. And then, uh, I'm sorry, so sorry. Can you give me one second? Mm-hmm. While she's doing that. Um... Make sure you guys do follow. There's a lot of great information um, that she has going on on her sites, on her YouTube, um, the book. This is the book. What if? Um, amazing cover. Like I just looking at the cover alone, I know it, it, it's some good stuff in there. Definitely got to make sure you guys are tapped in with that. And on the books on the floor. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, oh, Facebook stalking. Where you get the photos from? I can't believe where my sources just know I'm good at what I do. Uh, so let me ask you this. Um, <laughs> because you you said there was a lot to unpack in what you said. Um, mm-hmm. As far as um, these questions and, and some of the answers you were looking for, 
do you feel like because I don't I don't want to talk bad about the generation we're in now. But we we touched on the reality stars and the Johnny Depp thing, and it's a lot of people who the society we live in is the salacious headlines that get the most clicks. It's the people yeah. who are constantly talking about you know sex and all that that gets the most clicks. You know. Um, in the podcast game, um, you know, it's, it's it's not easy to, um, I mean, get the clicks of, you know, tits ain't out or something like that. So I just feel like with the cover of your book, I'm not going to say it's, it is a, just looking at the cover makes me think. Um, and I feel like the cover works for the time we're in because... Again, it's one of those times where if you're not putting it in people's faces, like you said, they're not paying attention to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times, like even myself, I don't really watch the news, so I don't know what's going on in the world, all like that, only because I know every time I turn it, I turn it on, I'm gonna get something crazy. Um, mm-hmm. I do still try to read the news, still try to you know uh, get it where I can, but it just feels like. When you watch the news, it'd be like, a bombing at five, news at six, and here's a yeah. kitty. And they'd be like, God damn, what? where'd the kitty come in? What is going on? So it's, it's just, I feel like we live in a, a time where sometimes you have to be over the top to get your point across. And I'm not saying, yeah. as, I feel like you were able to walk that line of where like, I'm giving you guys this information and it's in your face, but I'm also going to give you a chance to think for yourselves. Um, which is, I think is dope in the, in the first place. Um, Cause not a lot of books do that. A lot of books think for you or, you know, give you an idea and people take those ideas and not running with it. And then you know, it's like when somebody learns a new word, like a big word, and they start using a sentence that don't even make no sense. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm guilty of it too but you know we have people in this world who they get the words and then that's all they know because you know Mm -hmm. uh, or they watch like Fox News and that's the only source they get their information from so everything from Fox News is gospel you know then you got Mm -hmm. people on the other side where they see CNN and that's all they see and everything is gospel Uh, I feel like you've been able to tap in the middle and you're giving this information in two ways that, you know, either side could be pissed at, but they still got to think about it. They still got to see it. They still got to answer that question at some point in time because that question ain't going nowhere. Exactly. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, you're good. I, I usually do a little dramatic um afterwards just to... Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um no, no, but the, again, that was a that was one of the the points as well. Is is whether they mad about it, they understand where I'm coming from, and you can't um, ring a bell. And he's included in it too. But number forty five, one thing I learned about number forty five and others is you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. For him, take him for example. This man spent four years, four short years in the White House, and within that time. He caused so much chaos, and and even afterwards, but yet and still, he had over 75 million American voting, uh, voting Americans in the U.S. riding for him. That's that's 25 percent of the U.S. adult population that was still supporting this man, and so that right there resonates to me statistically, uh, figuratively, and literally that no matter who you are what you are about in life and what you sell into the public, there will be somebody there who will buy it. So exactly. even with this book, it's going to be people out there that don't like it, but it's going to be people that feel where I'm coming from. So I'm going to go where I'm celebrated and not where I'm tolerated. Exactly. Um, so speaking of him, um, <laughs> so divided, um, so um Ooh. Like, and I don't really get into politics. Um, I don't do religion. I don't do politics. Yeah. Try to stay away from that. There's know, so divisive. It. So, um, you know, you never know who is on what side until you really ask that question. Um, I have know some good Republicans. I know some shitty ones. I know some good Democrats. I know some horrible ones. So really none of that matters. 
Uh, as long as you do it right by people, that's where I really, really, really gets down to. But people forget before he ran for president, he wasn't like that. Yeah. But he was smart enough to know that he if he stepped into that negativity that people was feeling because of Obama, he would win. He played a role. He mm-hmm. was a puppet actor. He he played the 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 tap dancing. The, the 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 you know he did all that, and people ate that shit up. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen this, but on HBO they have a documentary called No Accident. Um, it's about the Charlottesville incident. Um, and it was just showing how like people thought like it was just like some random event where these protesters and tiki torches and, you know, people got ran over, but this was a planned attack. Like these people were, these guys were planning this. They had secret mm-hmm. code, secret names. And it was just like off the wall. Um, so I always think like none of that, it wasn't by accident that some of this stuff happens. It's just how we react and how we um, choose to move forward that will, you know, make things better. And I think, you know, things like um, just what we talked about, just like I don't I don't know about protests all the time. Um, I think sometimes we I don't want to say this. Um, we've been marching forever. So at, at some point we got to stop marching and start really getting down to it. Um, and that's what I like about your book. It's really one of those things that get down to it. Um, it's not really, you know, it's not playing no games. It's like, here's what's wrong with it. Look at it and see how we can fix it. Um, exactly. I think that's yeah, and, and that, again, I, I did, I want to iterate, it's, 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 it's for the grown and mature only, and not only, but for those, again, who can't take the heat, still come onto the kitchen. And for those who refuse to come to the kitchen, because of the heat, I say for those out there who are, are listening and watching, and again, I encourage y'all to get this book. Uh, again, what if controversial paradigm shift when we do, and next time, unfortunately, when we have to go to a protest for you know the death of an unarmed, I want to say black person because it's not just black people they kill an innocent unarmed person that that's that's being killed. I want you guys to you know with my permission to uh, hold these illustrations up you know, on your little posters and let them, let them see what we see and what we feel in and, and, and show us in that, in that, that mirror and, and see how they would feel. And again, it's not to piss them off, but just to remind them and just to say, you know, hey, what if, you know, this was happening to you and your people? And I'm pretty sure you, that answer would be they wouldn't be okay with it. And so, um, as well as, Again, I don't want to dwell on it on the fact that the way that I have it set up, that the reason why I have it set up in this way is to get your attention. Like I said, one thing I learned about, you know, society is that they flock to con- controversy before anything else. And so that's why I have it even in the title, Controversial. <laughs> so you'll know that this book right off the bat is bringing you the controversy. And um, But not just with the controversy, it's making you think. It's pushing and, and encouraging for change as well as for unity. And it's, it's not about, we can't fix, you know, what happened in the past or change what happened in the past. But let's, you know, work on fixing towards the future and what we could do better. You know, we, I have, I don't want to talk too much about it. That's why I want you guys to go go out, go on my website and get the book and then read it for yourselves. And, and then you yep. judge then, you know, and share it with others and your opinions on it. And so, again, go to my website, differenceworld.net and get your book and then afterwards you go to my YouTube channel and you hit that subscribe button and you check out my YouTube videos. Uh, like I said with my YouTube channel, um, I like to look at myself as a woman with many hats or more than, than one option. Um, on Mondays we do motivational speaking, on Tuesdays uh, we do our social awareness topics and on Wednesday we do our interviews, our collaborations if you will. And on Thursday, we do our pop culture and movie reviews uh, that I work with my nephew on that. He likes to do the little co-host with those. And then on Fridays is where I drop my travel vlogs. And so if anybody out there wondering the places I've been, I've uh, been to just about 50 countries, uh, be sure to uh, check out my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. Um, and you guys can see, just, yeah, just about. I just reloaded my one for Paris. I'm dropping Cuba today. And Damn. Did, um, yeah, I've been all, all everywhere, man. I was getting it. I was living life. And then Clear. Don't, don't, um, yeah, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't imagine. Go to my YouTube channel and check it out. 
I'm gonna have to. That was Paris. Yeah, Paris. Mm, it ain't what people like to make it out to be. It's very yeah, touristy, but like, it, it's not. I heard it. it's uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. I heard it staying over. <laughs> here. I heard it. <laughs> but yeah, but and most importantly, uh, DC. Before we end the show, I definitely also. Uh, in, everywhere I go, and in, in including the, the one of the most important topics with Third Eye Entertainment is advocating and pushing for mental health awareness, especially in the Black community. And with anybody that's affected by mental health issues, one thing about it, mental illness and uh, stress does not discriminate. It doesn't care if you're Black, That'll White, work. male, female, tall, short, skinny, fat, gay, straight. Don't don't give a damn. And so. Uh, like I said, getting my mental health in order is what led to me writing a book and starting a business and so on and so forth. And so I want to encourage anybody out there that's listening and watching at this time that may be going through any type of mental stress or anguish or illness, be it depression, anxiety, uh, uh, suicidal thoughts, especially, as well as those that may be dealing with bullying, peer pressure, uh, uh, Drug relapse, man, you know, mental illness, it, it comes with many shapes and forms. But I want you guys out there that may be going through it or know somebody that is to know that it's okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you, be it talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, uh, uh, hitting up a gym, uh, getting on medication if need be, cutting people off, mending broken bridges, whatever the case may mean. Uh, for you to do whatever it is that you have to to keep your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you need or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you can visit 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S. that's watching your voice and listening to this podcast, you guys can visit incounseling.com. That's spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember uh, to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you because at the end of the day, you're the own captain of your own ship, and you decide where to navigate the waters. Lastly, I want you guys that's going through any type of trial and tribulation to remember that this too shall pass, and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option, so therefore it's not worth it, so don't do it. And no. so that's my little bid when it comes to mental health awareness, and so we, we heavily advocate that uh, here with Third Eye Entertainment and the Indifference World well, YouTube channels. And so if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see that uh, bit in every little uh, blog that I post. But um, I also want to take this time to thank you, DC, for having me on here. Um, oh, no. As well as, spoiler uh, alert, yeah. guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, I think it <laughs> No, but um, it's, mental health is something that's very important, you know, to everybody who's been on this show. We advocate, you know, to make sure um, you do take care of your mentals because that's very important. Um, I recently started smoking weed to take care of mine. Uh, I had a little anxiety, so I started smoking a little. I don't do it heavy, so don't judge me, people. Mind your business. Do it while I'm growing up, pay bills. But uh, every, you know, I don't, I don't like pills. I don't. I refuse to try to take pills or anything like that. So I was like, well, you know, let me let me smoke a little weed. Maybe that help me out. I forgot how when you high. Uh, <laughs> Shit is weird. Don't <laughs> um, judge me, people, but I watched a lot. What you going through? <laughs> I watched a lot of documentaries while I was high, and I was like, you know what? This makes sense now. A lot of this, like I said, I watched the no in, no accident about the Charlottesville. I was high. Now I wanted to turn, but it just kept oh, yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and then after mm -hmm. that, another show, a movie came over. Yeah. Time. I don't know what it was. But anyway, um, I say all that to say. That's what's up. Uh, what she said yeah, is very getting important. Getting your mental health is powerful. Mental health is because yeah, you know, yeah. anxiety, depression. There's a lot of different phases, and it don't it don't all look the same on everybody. Um, like nobody uh, would think, you know, I deal with uh, anxiety and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Um, but it happens, you know, when you're doing a lot, you're trying to make things yeah. happen. Yeah, I know about that. 
yeah, you forget to check in with yourself. So sometimes you just got to. Yeah. But one thing I, I found out about mental health when. Yeah. But you know what? When I found about when I finally got together and got serious about going to therapy or, you know, getting my mental health in order. One thing I found is, is that you excuse my dog. If you got him yelling, you know, sorry about that. Um, you become one more self-aware of yourself. And when you're self-aware, then you find your voice. And when you find your voice, then you're able to set boundaries. And so if anybody wondering and asking, well, what am I going to get out of getting my mental health in check and going to therapy? That's what can happen for you, man. It can, it can open up so many doors and take you from the back to the front. And so, again, I encourage anybody out there that's going through any type of mental stress or anguish to take back your power and free yourself from that mental bondage and that psychological box that you or somebody else may have put you in. It's, again, uh, I won't say it again, but if you know that there's an issue and it's a problem, and again, it may not be your fault or out of your control, but if you know that there's a problem that needs to be fixed and you don't want to get it fixed, then it is your fault. The same as the same. Exactly. With that being said, yeah, uh, and I often tell people uh, with my motto, manifest, plan, prepare, uh, when it comes to that, I like to break that down. With manifest, that means removing all the doubt, all the fear, all the naysay, and replacing it with uh, words of beauty and, and affirmation, and speaking it into existence, seeing it before you receive it. And then once you move on uh, from the manifestation, plan it, get to, get to planning it writing it out on paper, coming up with a, a second plan, a backup plan, an exit plan. You can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that it is coming. And again, whatever trial and tribulation that comes your way, just remember that this too shall pass and you will get through it just like a boss should. And so uh, once you, you have that down packed, I, I say prepare in the sense of preparing yourself from the inside out. Uh, getting your physical house in order, your mental house in order, your financial house in order, mending broken bridges, cutting people off. So therefore, whenever it is that you manifest it for, when it comes to you, you can be prepared for it. You won't squander it like how I did in my past when I didn't feel I was worthy of it. You, you would have earned it. And so manifest, plan, and prepare for whatever it is that you want in life, and it will surely come to you. And so that's often what I tell people, you know, as far as my motto. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. You got any other questions for me? I feel like I talk too much. No, you was good. Uh, I usually get like that. A um, little housekeeping, y'all. Make sure y'all go. I'm going to this back up here because I was, uh, you know, did my research. Make sure y'all go out and get the book, What If? Mm -hmm. Paradigm Shift. Make sure y'all get that. Uh, make sure you also grow. I'm surprised you didn't run across the book trailer. Oh, I, didn't, ah, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Um, I'm gonna watch it again because I was I wasn't prepared. Um, yeah, you never but can be, but that, that's the, that's the point of it all. So again, you guys go out and get my book. What if a controversial paradigm shift is available on my website, differenceworld.net. And again, after you go to my website. Check out all my other social media handles, including my Instagram, TikTok, and especially my YouTube channel. Definitely go to my YouTube channel, Difference World YT. Come and learn and hit the subscribe button and that notification bell for your girl. So when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn about your girl. Exactly. Uh, so, as y'all know, it's that time. Um... Uh, Little parting shots, uh, last chance for everybody to get the, you know, word of encouragement and everything like that out. Um, anything else you want to tell the people before you go? But uh, before you do that, she'll be back next week because next week is Queenish week. Um, uh, so can't can't wait for that. Um, queens are gonna be able to talk, have a real conversation. My guy Aria the King, will you be your moderator? You won't see this face on there. Don't worry about it. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to that. And then after that, who knows? The sky's the limit. Um, you know, because that will be actually this is the end of season eight. So we'll be working on season nine here real soon. Hey, look at you, you dope boy. Um, I guess my party shot would be again uh, for everybody out there watching and listening. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening and rocking out with your girl. I know I could be long winded, but hopefully I dropped some gems for you guys that you guys can use. In your everyday life and hopefully I uh, inspired you with my story and you know again whatever it is in life that you're feeling that you're destined for 
You have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and then it will surely come to you guys. Difference will come and learn. My parting shot is stop being fucking stupid, people. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It's been a while since I got right? Now you came with the shits. <laughs> now I gotta come with it. Okay. <laughs> hey, um, tip your weed man on the way out. <laughs> yeah, uh, shit. <laughs> make sure your drinks is uh full. Uh but no, seriously, you know, the mentals is important, like I said. Um I didn't know I had anxiety um until I had it. Um it's not really bad or anything like that. Um, but it's just to the fact to where, you know, sometimes I don't like big crowds and all like that. So, so sometimes mm-hmm. I really uh, withdraw. I noticed when I was high, I was like really, I was mellow. I wasn't thinking as much. So, you know, I'm not advocating weed, I weed, but I'm just saying, you know, um, drugs are bad. <laughs> okay. Um, but also, drugs not bad. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I weed, lots of it. Um, but no, um, just make sure you're taking care of yourself. That's what's most important because uh, everybody needs somebody and somebody needs you. Um, you know, so take care of yourself, take care of your mentals. We'll see you next week. Appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna leave y'all with the white girl. Come on, white girl. Where you at? There she go. White girl. All right, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoy listening to that audio interview I did uh, a couple of weeks back with my boy DC of the With the Shits podcast. And where you know, you come onto his podcast and you talk your shit and you know, you pop your shit however you feel. I like the fact that, you know, he, he keeps it a, you know, very open space. You come and be you. Uh, it's very, you know, authentic. No question, no set questions, if you will. It's just flowing with it. And as you guys see, we do talk about, you know, everything from uh, my struggles and stories and coming up from, you know, mental health awareness and so again big shout out to dc and you guys be sure to check him out and show him love i dropped his description in the link below so definitely after you guys subscribe to my youtube channel you go out and you check your boys uh um podcast i believe it's available on Streamyard and other platforms as well so again i've shared his link so show him some love and again big shout out to dc for having me and uh, the opportunity to come on and share my stories and so again this is what it's all about and if you guys enjoyed my vlog, uh, not excuse me, not my vlog, but uh, my podcast interview, if you guys want to see more, show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to my YouTube channel, you guys. I truly appreciate all the love and support. I'm trying to close out 2023 on a strong note. I got a goal I want to meet or maintain or strive for. And even if I don't make it, at least I know that I'm working towards it and eventually we'll get to us that point. And so... Again, thank you guys so much for the love and support. I truly appreciate it. Keep it coming and don't stop. As well as be sure to check out all my other social media handles, including my Instagram, my TikTok. Um, and you can do that on my website, differencewell.net. Again, um, you can go there and check out all my other social media handles. I got the links there. As well as anybody else uh, that's looking to do collaborations and looking for motivational speakers, you get at your girl at my website, send me a, a message, uh, book me, uh, email, DM, you know, I'm free of charge as of now. So just get in while you can. You know, it won't be soon before long before I blow up and, you know, be getting on requests all over the world. So uh, get it in while you can now, you guys. And so with that being said, as well, well, don't forget to check out my book and get a copy of my book. Um, holiday season is upon us. It'll be a great time to get this for all the uh, book lovers in your family. Um, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is available again at differenceworld.net. And with this book, it is written to encourage and inform thoughtful provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations, you guys. So again, be advised that this is intended for a mature audience. It has sensitive content. And so if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. Just get your little fire back. You'll be okay, baby. <laughs> you might get burned, but you'll be all right. You'll survive. That's the point of it all, you guys, is to have these conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug or turned a blind eye to. And, and quite frankly, you know, it's just time to talk about it. Even if it goes nowhere fast, that's the point of it all. It's just, you know, nothing beats a failure but a try. And so the way that I, I attempt to try is to capture your attention in the roughest and toughest manner. And once I capture that, you see what the real reason is that I have it, your attention. And so with this book, again, 
uh, the way that I set it up is intended for mature audience, but there's means to or method to my madness with it. But again, in order for you to see that, you got to go copy the book. So again, go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Ship. Uh, and again, I truly appreciate all the love and support that's coming in and people ordering these books and I'm sending them out. Um, big shout out to that. I don't want to put out their name, you know, privacy purposes. Big shout out to, you know, that um, the supporter that I had messed up their order and then was working with me. I truly appreciate you again. Thank you so much. Um, but other than that, you guys, again, keep all the love and support coming and writing reviews about my book and what you think about it. And then again, and get these conversations rolling. That's the point of it all. And so uh, with that being said, moving on, what else we got going on? Tomorrow's Thursday, you guys. Man, this week's so busy. It's just this, um, this is the week of Thanksgiving, a lot going on. Man, this week has been so hectic. I been trying to wait and save it up for you guys but tomorrow I got a good uh, little special video coming for you guys uh, with Thanksgiving um, so again that's why you guys got to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button so when I drop the content you guys get notified and you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn about your girls but I got a good one and a hot one for you, you guys are gonna like this one uh, so again be sure to tune in and hit that subscribe button you guys for your girl yeah um, what else we got moving on? Um, let's do our mental health check time, you guys. Uh, again, with Third Light Entertainment, this is you know one of the main purposes and, and objectives of our business is to strive for bringing you know mental health awareness to society. And, and again, with anybody out there that's struggling with any type of you know mental anguish, including depression, having suicidal thoughts, anxiety attacks, even you know dealing with bullying or drug relapse. I want you guys out there that are struggling with these issues, including myself, to please know that it's okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you, talking with a family member, a therapist, a friend, picking up a hobby, you know, mending broken bridges, cutting people off, even getting on med medication if that is the case. Do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and to keep you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you need or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources that I'm about to share with you, please feel free to share with them. Uh, for those that want the crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us. Uh, as well as those we can check out 988lifeline.org and for those that are outside of the U.S. that's checking out your girl's YouTube channel you guys can check out incounseling.com that is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com and remember you guys although I am giving you these mental health resources you have to remember that it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you because at the end of the day you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, nobody else. And with that being said, I want anybody out there that's going through any type of trial and tribulations and struggles, whatever the case may be, please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. And then just remember, whatever trial and tribulations that you are going through, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option. It's not worth it. So don't do it. Especially with the holiday season rolling around, it's very important. You know, they say Christmas time is the most depressing time, and I understand that now because for me, it's just a totally different ball game since I lost my mom. You know, the day after Christmas, and it's just it's not the same for me. This is this has been the second time around, but. I've already, you know, prepared myself to have a plan of action, you know, to keep myself busy uh, around that time. And, and just, again, just having that willpower and that want to not succumb to, you know, depression and, and find, falling into that, you know, that, that, that dark hole, man. It's, it's, it's hard, man. And it's easy to fall into it. But you guys out there just have to remember this too shall pass and you will get through it. That's all I've been telling myself. By the grace of God, I've been getting through it, man. I don't know anybody's, you know, spiritual belief. I'm not here to preach religion or politics. But again, if you believe in that higher power, you just have to know that he will get you through it. And so um, moving on and closing out to a more positive note, you guys. Um, again, just remember to keep yourself, you know, whatever.
whatever the case may be, mental health, physical health, keep it all in check. It all, it, it's all tied into one, you guys. And again, um, I hope you guys enjoy watching and listening to my podcast interview. And shout out to DC for having me. Again, don't forget, check out his uh, social media page and show him some love as well. And again, if you guys like this vlog, show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and don't forget, hit that subscribe button for your girl. Yeah. All right, you guys. So we're going to close out this note, uh, excuse me, this vlog, and just with a reminder for anybody out there that's, you know, going for their dreams and goals in life, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And it will surely come to you guys. Dip as well. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.